Why, then we need why? to get started. Let's get started. Um, Leah, this is Claire's um, fiddle quilt, fidget quilt. Oh, no. uh, and uh, we were we were saying that she had put this ribbon here to be an arrow. So I sewed around it, and I sewed uh, the feathers for for the um, back of the arrow uh, by just uh, sewing up and back, up and back. I want to make this all laugh. The hat was made from, you know, the red cloth that you um, uh, clean your glasses with from a glass case? Yeah. Yeah. I, I got a pen and I drew the shape of the hat and I used the, the cleaning cloth for the uh, eyeglasses. And that's what it's made from. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. It's so colorful, Claire. Very colorful. Very pretty. I was looking for something red other than my lips. <laughs> <laughs> and your good heart. <laughs> um, this is Thank one you that, so much, Joyce. Missing you're welcome. Your this uh, is one I made for a friend of mine. I'm going to mail it off to her. Her father has stage four Alzheimer's. And I said, well, I'm in the been making fiddle quilts. So I, I thought that uh, he would enjoy this one. So this is some prairie points. Uh, he likes fishing. He likes sports. Is this uh, a mouse? I'm sorry. Is that a mouse or a teddy bear? The brown. This, this is a mouse. There's oh! a little mice on this. Oh, oh yeah. No, but so, and this you, you untie it. And it opens little doors. And the, here, and this is a pocket. This is a zipper. So it should be fun. I like the sneakers. <laughs> yeah, it's cute. And then this is my latest baby quilt that I made. Oh, wow. A friend of mine had a baby. Wow. So they have three girls, and now they have a little boy, so it had to be a oh, boy. Wow. And it has uh, flannel on the back with dinosaurs. Oh, you have your own tag back there. I'm sorry? You have your own tag made by... That's right. That's right. I, I made the tags, you know, and I put the Brookline Bees tag on all of your fidget quilts. Oh. Before they went. Did the quilts go across the street? Yeah. Yeah, they did. Yeah, oh, they did. Uh, she picked them up about a week ago. Oh. So today I thought we'd talk about flying geese. And the, what inspired this um, block is the, the, geese fly in formation when they go south for the winter and, and back north again. And they fly in formation um, because it gives them more range. But this is the way quilters have interpreted the flying geese. And so it's this block that's twice as long as it is wide. Okay. And, it looks like a folded and, napkin. Yes, it does. So that's the principle of it. And you can do it with a lot of different scraps. Here you can see this one's pretty scrappy. People make quilts out of this. There's, a, an, a, again, another scrappy one. Um, and you can either make them very planned or very scrappy. And this is just to give you some idea of the way people put them into a quilt. So here's one string of them. And here, if you look closely in this set of stars, the components are all those flying geese uh, components. So here's a flying goose. Okay, so you have a point and then uh, this part's called the goose. This is called the goose and this is called the sky. Okay, but it can be dark on the inside and, and light sky, or it could be the reverse. There are many different ways to make them here. This is a flying goose component. So very it's nice. often seen in stars and different kinds They're of- They're very color coordinated, uh, Joyce. I like yeah. the colors, the way you blend them in. Right, and nice. this, this is not a flying goose. This is called a half square triangle. So this is a block that's made up of two half square triangles. So you take a square and you cut it in half. And you take those two triangles and you put them together. So if I took two of those triangles that I just made, 
and sew that line. When I open it up, how light, how it, big is it gonna be? So if this is a three and a half inch square, and this is a three and a half inch square, and I took two of those triangles and put it together, is it gonna be three and a half or what? Well, no, it'll be like probably three. You're That's probably right. going to lose a, a half an inch. Exactly. So you're going to lose that seam allowance. So it will be smaller. So if you want it to come out to three and a half, you have to cut it bigger in the first place. Four inches. Okay. Me. That's, that's very, very the, nice. the other tricky thing about when you're dealing with triangles is that this edge is a bias edge. So where have we heard the word bias before? What do you do with bias? Bias binding. Bias binding. Uh, yeah, bias stretches too. Exactly. And that's it's good. So it's a good quality when we're doing bias binding. But when you're trying to make something flat and you're putting these bias edges together, you have to be a little more careful with them because they're stretchy, okay? Right. So just make sure you don't torque it as you sew it. Well, don't twiddle your fingers. That means don't pull on it. That's right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, don't twiddle your fingers. Don't pull. <laughs> Michael. Oh, so, nice. So this is a flying goose unit. This is what we're gonna try to make. And it, it the typically it is twice as wide as it is high, okay. And the blue parts called the goose, and the red red parts called the sky or the background. Okay. So is that called? Know, excuse me, is that called periwinkle blue? Yeah, it is pretty much periwinkle blue. Yeah. Oh, I um, love. So this one is three and a half by six and a half, which is a typical size, but they can be any size. It, it, they don't have to be any particular size. And in the old days, it was whatever size you wanted them to be. And you would just make a template. Uh, the original templates were made of wood. I'll show you some of those later in, in the presentation. But now uh, we uh, often use um, plexiglass because you can see through it. It's really nice. So the finished size is going to be three by six. We're going to cut it to three and a half by six and a half. Okay. Is that is that uh, basting around it? How'd you do that by hand or the machine? No, I just drew that so that you could see. This is going to be the finished size. So this this overlap at the top gives us our seam allowance. Wow. And so we cut it to three and a half by six and a half, but we're gonna lose these okay. seam allowances and our finish size is gonna be that. So how, so many of, how many of those do you need? Depends on your pattern. Oh. Anywhere from three to 60, depending on your pattern. Mm -hmm. So constructing a flying geese, we're gonna take that goose color, the big one, three and a half by six and a half. Then we're gonna take a three and a half inch square and draw a diagonal line on it. Just draw a diagonal line. And then sew just a hair to the outside edge of it. So toward this point. Um, and the reason for that is when you fold it over, you'll have enough to fold over the sewing line and still cover the entire, um, this entire field. Very nice. So once you fold it back and press it, then you take a second piece of sky and put it on top and draw your diagonal line. And you'll see that they overlap. They overlap just a little bit. And that's to make that seam allowance for us. Okay. Is this all so, cotton material? I'm sorry? Is the material made of cotton? Yeah, you normally quilt with material made of cotton, yes. So again, we're going to sew just a hair to the outside edge of that line and fold it over and press it. And now we have a flying geese unit. And this is your seam allowance so that when we make that seam, we're still going to be able to see that point. So that's the critical factor that we're looking for here. Everything's in a point. Like the corners are considered like a point. 
Yes. So, so these points become my important. Picture in my in my brain a triangle. Uh, if I'm going to make something, Just, right? Or an ice cream cone. So I set out to make some of these and I had some scraps that were the right width. And so I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cute to have these little children in the in the blocks? Oh, and then, nice. then I realized that if I make a flying goose out of that, I chop the head off that kid. Oh yeah, kid. <laughs> and I went, no, that's not really very good. So all right, second try. <laughs> we'll use this one instead. Um yeah. All well, right. Everything you do is an experiment, the way I feel. That's right, and you, you, that's why you want to try things out on paper or, or just by placing things, like I did that with that with the children, placing them and thinking about it, and then going, no, I don't think that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's this is what I did with the with the fake. Uh, squares that I showed you before. I've drawn my line on the fabric. I've sewed just adjacent to that line. And now I'm going to fold it and press it. Are these and all scraps of material that you happen to have? Uh, have you bought new stuff? Or oh, this is no, this is stuff from my stash. And now you can cut this off. This is that seam allowance. And you can cut that part off or not. But if you don't cut it off, you wind up with three layers of fabric on that corner. And so I like to cut it off, trim it, it off. It's a little heavy. Yeah, it's a little heavy. All right, so now that we have it pressed, we put the second one on top and draw that same line. We have our overlap here, which is a good thing. And we can turn it and press it. Wow, beautiful. And um, I like, I like the this, this swirls, uh, like all different patterns, like that. Right? When you're ironing, Joyce, do you put water in the steam iron? I no? never put water in my iron. Why? The reason for that is a lot of irons will spit. They'll mm -hmm. spit brown water on your fabric, and then that's a real pain in the neck to get it out. You don't want it to spit on your quilt. So I never put water in my iron. If I need water to help, I use a spray bottle. Oh, and, that's a good idea. And you know, at the senior center, we had a spray bottle. It was like the gardening kind, it, but it's built for a man's hand. And I was at the hairdressers once and she was misting my hair. And I realized she had a smaller one that was made for a lady's hand. So I bought some misters that are created for hair. And uh, that's a much better size for me to deal with. Oh, yeah, the mini one, yeah. Yeah, I have one. They're smaller so and they fit. You can get it in the yeah. dollar store for a dollar. Exactly. So they're not expensive. And I just use that to mist my fabric if I need it. But um, usually I don't use water on the fabrics because the it'll distort the, the threads in the fabric. So unless they're really stubborn wrinkles, I don't use it. This, this one came with my mushroom kit. Oh, cute, cute. That, that might be a little small for ironing, but yes, anything that will just uh, spritz a little bit of water on it, it will help you get a stubborn wrinkle out of it. And then you, once you've got these, you can organize them in different patterns. And I just played with them a little bit to give you an idea of the different things you can do with geese. Here's one where they're going around in a circle. Or here's one that's a star. So if you look just at the blue, so think that this pink is background. So if you look just at the blue, you've got the center of the star and the points of the star <laughs> like that. Okay, so that's a, a, one way to make a star. In quilting. Uh, Joyce, excuse me. These all look like they're different square size. This is a different size, and this is smaller than this one. In my eyes, I think are it's they the, all different sizes. I think it's an optical illusion because they are all the same size. But um, uh, the, 
the different photographs are probably slightly different dimensions. Oh, okay. I think the photographs are different. These are the same squares that are in this this picture. The exact same ones. I just rearranged them. It's probably my eyes. No, I think it's the size of the picture. So I've distorted the size in that respect. I no, because the it turns sideways. She she loses the uh, the, the angle. I lose the angle. Yeah, the angle is different. So when you put them together, you can see I pinned this from the other side just because it was easier. But then I'm sewing on the side with the point because I want to be sure to cross this very point with my sewing line. And then I will have that nice point in my finished product. That's very nice. So they come out like that. Oh. When you sew them One, together. Two, three, four, five, six. Mm, very nice. After you count six, oh, you pick up the sticks. So I have another baby quilt that I'm thinking about using some of these in. These are the original kind of wooden um, templates hmm. that would have been made, you know, for Amish quilting. You use your carpentry skills to make a template that then can be used to cut out the fabric. Because don't forget, and you learned this with Patty and, and Marion, that um, you would cut, you first draw on the fabric and then cut on those pencil lines to cut out your pieces. Uh, now we have rotary cutters, which are really neat. But uh, in the old days, they had templates that were like this that were open and, and the critical size is on the inside of this. So it's holding down your fabric firmly so that when you uh, draw with your pencil that you're not moving the fabric. Uh, so it's a nice kind of template. Now we use um, the uh, acrylics that you can see through and we usually go on the outside edge of the acrylic templates, but these wooden templates you would do on the inside. So I, what I've shown you is the traditional way to make a flying goose. It's still the most accurate way. You can make any size you want to. Uh, the pieces are small, so you have a lot of cutting to do. That, but the advantage to that is you can use scraps. And that's what they used to do this with scraps because those corners squares are, are pretty little and the, even the goose part, the rectangle is fairly small. Well, the, a lot of people, economical. I'm sorry? They were very economical in those days. They never that's, threw anything away. That's right. Now, <laughs> some, people, some people don't like this method because it does waste the fabric that you cut off from those corners that we're not going to use. Um, I, it's, it's a trade-off between uh, you lose a little bit of fabric, but they were scraps anyway, so do you care? Uh, it does take time cutting small pieces. You can make yourself some templates to aid cutting or marking. And these, as I showed you, are the old templates. The new ones are made of acrylic. And I'll show you some of those later. There's a Scottish expression, waste not, want not. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, you betcha. Leo, Leo, did you hear that? I gave you a standing ovation. <laughs> hey, you cut your head off. Ah! Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> So there's another method I wanted to share with you. This is the easiest method for making a flying goose. It's called a one seam flying goose. And I decided to show everybody. So this is something that I learned from a group of quilters in England several years ago. So I want to show you how to do this. Great. Okay? The one seam flying geese block. Now what, I, what I've done, of course, you know me and my colorful fabric. I'm actually using two fabrics. I'm using a multicolored hand dyed fabric that we do here in the studio. I'm also using a dark fabric that's from my new red rooster fabrics. All right. This is one of the commercial darks. And I have cut a strip from the uh, multicolor fabric that is three inches wide. I've also <laughs> cut three inch squares, and you can see a stack of them, three inch squares from my sort of multicolored dark fabric. Now, of course, you could use any colors, 
Absolutely. that you like. So but I'm I just, like these. I'm just using what I like. So the three inch squares are easy for you to know. Those are, those are done and I'm going to take my multicolored fabric and I'm going to cut, of course it's three inches wide, mm -hmm. I'm going to cut five and a half inches. So let me just, of course, three I'm, by five and a half. Three by five and a half, and I will tell you, I'm a I'm a line person. Sometimes I like using my ruler on the lines. No, 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 I, you're not supposed to do that. You're I Ricky Tan. I, <laughs> I know I'm cutting with the ruler. Okay. And, and I'm measuring, but one, two, three, four, five and a half. So I'm also not supposed to cut towards me, but since the iron's in the way, and I am a professional. <laughs> Trained professional, Trained right? professional. I'm going to cut that five and a half inch rectangle. Now, Alex, it's supper time. It's time for us to make some sandwiches. We're going to take two of our three inch squares. Okay. We're going to take our five and a half inch, fold it in half, and we're going to put the fold at the top. In other words, it's facing away from me, but I align the raw edges near me. All righty. Okay. So as you can see, the fold does not make it. Yeah, it's all short. The way. It's what about shorter. a quarter of an inch or even and less? That's what maybe. I'm looking for. Oh, okay. Quarter right. inch is basically what I'm looking for. I fold that in half. This is my first piece was right side up. Mm -hmm. My folded piece is folded wrong sides together, mm -hmm. by the way. Good stuff on the outside. Absolutely. And now I'm making the sandwich by closing it up with the wrong side on top so the right side is facing down. And we're just going to sew a quarter inch seam along the right. And I should say you're going to That's do that That's right. For you me. told me to get busy. And this is the one time you do care about a quarter inch. I do. I sure do because I want these blocks to finish. You actually commented accurately. on mine. Which I thought was rather strange. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're doing a very good job. Thank you, Mr. Tim. So the nice thing is that you can make your little sandwiches and you have them all stacked up. Make sure that you get them oriented in the right direction. Yeah, and you were real clear about that. Make sure that the fold... The fold is at the top and it's right. tucked in a quarter inch. And you just whiz those right through. Now, of course, you want to make sure you've got plenty of bobbin thread when you're doing this. <laughs> because you could do about 150 of those and they'll all end up on the floor in a with no stitching Ricky, at that's all. A, that's a freak of nature. Okay. That, you know, you've been chain piece, piecing for about, what, you know, half hour and you have no and thread? And you down, that's yeah. right. All right, so we've got these now, and what I want to do is I want to slice them into little bits so that they're all separated. And I'm going to take one of them now and just show you how this opens up and presses. All right, we're going to open it up. I've got the fold away from me again. Mm -hmm. I like to just open this up and just press it first to get the, the top part of the bread of the sandwich off okay. to the side. And then take your flying geese, the little segment that's going to be that, and you'll just open it up. Ah! Love hey, that! Hey, 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 hey. All right. It's the booty catcher. It comes right to the corner. Give that a little bit of a press. Come up there. And not only do you have a one seam flying geese block, but look, You've got little pockets mm -hmm. to put dimensional flying, geese. dimensional flying geese. So I have to thank my wonderful English friends for teaching me that. Well, thank you for I, teaching I, us that because I, I couldn't believe it on the phone. I couldn't it, believe it's it. It's great, isn't it? And then you can make these oh, by the hundreds mm -hmm. if you want to. And then you can just play with them and stack them however you like. Ooh. I have stacked them up. I've staggered them. Can you see that I've staggered them there? And you could, if you like, you could make them more typical where they're all in rows. Sure, so you, you could do, do tons of things. Lots of things that you can do with this very simple block. Now look at the quilt that I made. This is called Flying Colors. Uh -huh. And you can see that I've actually used some little half inch sashing strips between uh -huh. the uh, geese and also on the between the rows as I sewed them together. Now you are not going to give everybody the instructions on the quilt, but on the piecing part because you're all about creativity. I'm all about creativity. So if you look at the picture and you want to duplicate mine, that's fine. But I think you should take these fine flying geese blocks and just play with them, have fun, make your own quilt, however small, however big that you want to make it. And of course now look at the full size image. Right. The full size quilt shows you how this one's laid out and that I've put some nice little borders on it with some very fine little details around that. And that was a fun quilt for me to make and it did not take long at all. I know. I, You proved it. Okay. You proved it, buddy. All right. So did you like that? Yeah. Good. All right.
that's the, the simplest way to make flying geese, but they are three-dimensional, so they're a little bit different. Um, and I'll show you how I made them. Uh, so you notice he, he cut three inch squares, not three and a half. So how, what's the finished size of his square gonna be? Two and a half. Two and a half. So because two and a half times two is five plus the half inch uh, seam allowance means that he gets a th three by five and a half inch rectangle for the goose. All right, are we following? Yes. Okay, so two and a half by five is gonna be the finished size of this because it's twice as wide as it is high. So I made, made a couple using those directions. Um, so uh, I have uh, a goose piece that's yellow and two pieces of sky that I'm gonna add to it. And this would be piecing it very similarly to the way that we did before, just so that we, do, we follow and understand what's the right side and what's the wrong side. So we're putting the right sides together. And um, what I'm gonna do is fold that right sides together. So the right side, the right side is underneath, the right side is up here and the right side is down here. Mm. Okay. And we're gonna make that sandwich you talked about. And we're gonna sew it so that it, we start sewing from this top and down, yeah. from the fold side and down. Okay. And then we open it up and this fold is gonna come right, up, right down on top of this seam. Oh. Right? And you'll press them together and they look like that. Cool. That's beautiful. And again, we is were, that blue material one of his materials? No, this is actually from the uh, from the um, kaleidoscope. Back and whack. Yeah, it's from the backing of the kaleidoscope quilt. It was it left over. Those. This is part of what I trimmed off after it came back from the quilter. I mm. had strips that I cleaned off the side, so they were just about mm. right. There are many, many ways to sew a goose. There's at least a dozen different methodologies out there. You can make four at a time in a variety of ways. So if you're interested in this, you might want to look at some of these. I'm not going to play them for you today, but um, there's a lot of them. But I wanted to show you how to trim or resize a, a flying goose because it's not as hard as it's made out to be. And a lot of, there are different rulers that you can get, but you don't absolutely have to have a ruler. I'll show you how to do it without a ruler. And the, the first thing you do is you put it down on your green board. Some of the basic tools in quilting are you need a green board and you need a rotary cutter and you need a, a good ruler. Um, and if you have those three things, you can do almost everything with quilting. Um, so the first thing I do uh, is to verify the seam allowance at the point. So I want to make sure that beyond this point, I have a quarter inch for my seam. And I checked it, it's pretty much right. I just trimmed this teeny little bit of thread there. there. But now I know I have that edge perfect. And the way I did that was to make sure that it's it's sitting on one of these nice lines. So I know that it's sitting straight and that I'm using my ruler straight. I'm measuring from this point. Uh, this one's a quarter inch, but I made sure that it's ah, straight up and down and we've got a quarter inch right there. Okay, so what size is it now? If I lay it on my board and you see, I started at 20 and it's going to 26 and a half. So it's six and a half inches wide and one, two, three and a half tall. Oh, so three again, by six. No, it's a six and a half. Six and six. a half by three and a half mm -hmm. is the way I made this one. Okay, so. Oh, it is, okay, I see it. Oh, let's no. say I wanna cut it down. You see, go further. So let's pretend I want to cut it down. I've already checked this edge. This, this edge I know is good. So if I turn it upside down and measure from this good edge, the one I've already established, mm -hmm. I'm going to go up to three yeah. 
and trim it to three, I can make sure that I have that width correct. Okay. So measure from your good edge up and uh, you can trim it off. So now we need to adjust the width. This is the tricky part. What I've done is first of all, to put it on the dark lines on every five inches, they make a dark line. So this helps you center things. I can see that line more easily through my ruler. So I've got it centered on those two lines. So here's the center of my piece at that point. And now I want to measure two and a half, two and three quarters inches. And here's how I did the math. So if it's a three inch cut, that's two and a half finished. The width is going to be two and a half times two is five plus a half is five and a half, which is the one that Ricky made in, on the video. And a half of that will be two and a half plus half of that seam allowance, a quarter of an inch. So we get two and three quarter on each side plus two and three quarter is going to be the five and a half. Okay. So here I'm measuring from this bright line, two and three quarter inches, and that's where I'm going to cut. And then I turn it upside down and I do the same thing. So I've got it on my dark lines. And I'm measuring two and three quarters inches and cut. Now, so here's some of the rulers. If you know what size you're aiming for, probably the easiest ruler to use is Eleanor Burns's ruler. And so if you're gonna make some of the four at a time kind, then you would sit, sit this on top of your goose and just cut right around it. Hmm. Um, so it makes it easy in that respect. But oh, I've got a bunch of those in my kit. Yeah, my drafting tools. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, it's like this, yeah. But you mean like this here, right here? <laughs> There's one more video I wanted to show you, and this is the Accu quilt that Fran was talking about the other day that she has um, that uh, allows that does the cutting for you. Oh, there's a graph I was looking for. Never mind, sorry. Hi, I'm Lynn. Hi. Just one second while I organize myself here. Um, mm. There's a screen and it's here. Okay, so with the AccuQuilt machine, it'll do the cutting for you. Hi, I'm Lynn. And hi, I'm Leslie. And today we want to show you, this is the new Go Flying Geese die that finishes to three inches by six inches. I'm so excited. I love flying geese. I use the block all the time. This is actually one of our most requested dies. I and it. so <laughs> we love it so much too that it's actually the die that's included with the Go Big electric fabric cutter. So even better, it's included. That's like right. That. <laughs> that's right. And uh, the, um, the, uh, wonderful table runner that we have here in front of us. This is the pattern that's included in the packaging with the flying geese die. It's called the flying windmill table runner. And so the great thing love about this is that uh, except for the sashing and the binding, all of the shapes are cut with this die. And what I really like about the project are a couple things. One, you have two different borders really. Mm -hmm. So you got other border ideas there. And are there really flying geese units in here? Yes. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Yes. It's the, <laughs> it's the quarter squares and the half square triangles. So just use in a different context what you can make. Absolutely. So it's not only can you make flying geese with this, this die, but you can make all different sorts of shapes. You can use just the quarter squares or just the half squares. You can mix and match them with our 12 inch sets or mm -hmm. our six inch sets. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what makes quilting so fun. Exactly. You can just start playing. And uh, we haven't even talked about if you change the fabric, right. which, is, which is Moda, was provided by Moda, by the way. But if you change the fabric, you'd get a completely different look and feel. OK, so I, well, let's show how to cut with this die Sounds on great. the big electric fabric cutter. I wanted to mention this is a 6 by 12 inch die board. So uh, not only is it compatible with the Go Big, but it's also compatible with the Go and the Go Baby. 
And uh, with all geometric shapes, you definitely want to make sure that you're cutting on the lengthwise grain. Mm -hmm. So if you have the selvage edge on your piece of fabric, you want to make sure that's the selvage edge is facing you, so or your your belly button, however you want to mm -hmm. um, remember that, um, so that that will ensure that the lengthwise grain or the strongest part of the fabric is running uh, the length of the cutter as it goes under the roller. And um, you can absolutely fan fold this uh, fabric as you're cutting up to six layers, or you can layer uh, your fabric. And if you're fan folding and cutting width of fabric strips, just leave a, a half inch from the width of the shape to make sure that you are uh, completely covering your shape. And uh, we're just gonna cover the half square triangles with a different um, color, and I wanna make sure with my two-tone foam that I've got everything covered. And I'm gonna place my mat on top next. And then we want to make sure with the electric fabric cutter that we turn it on. That's the hard part. That's the hard <laughs> part. And then because uh, the die is a 6 by 12 inch die, I could actually run a second 6 by 12 inch die through at the same time. And I can also, because the machine is doing all the work, I could be over here uh, prepping another die as I'm waiting. Now, Lynn, you like to call some of the, these pieces. You call this one a goose? Yes. And sky. Sky. And I usually refer to these as wings. Either one do the same. Yes. Concept, but it's fun how different names get going to pieces. Well, it's fun to, to learn some of the history with these different blocks, you know, as you're quilting, mm -hmm. because some of them are very old. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's, it's wonderful to learn what, how, mm -hmm. they, how they came to be. Mm -hmm. So the cool right. thing about the dies is that they came all out, and they are already all notched. Mm -hmm. So traditionally when sewing a flying geese unit, we would take a square and put it here, and sew a quarter or so down from point to point, and then you'd mm -hmm. flip it up and then have to trim off all of this extra fabric, which would be waste. So the dye is actually saving us fabric, too. Wonderful. Isn't that cool? And I love the fact that this is a great dye for, I can go into my stash and use a lot of fabric there, too. Oh, and, definitely. And mm -hmm. feel like I'm, uh, you know, I can, I can create something new with something that I already have. Definitely. And so here I'm going to just take my, my goose and a wing and line her right up. Dog ears are already cut off, so it's all ready to go. And just go into my machine. Now, because I don't have that extra fabric there with the dog ears, I want to make sure I get all the way up to the needle of my machine so that my machine can move it through. And that's all you have to remember. And then you just sew right down. The quarter inch seam is already accounted for in the shape. So isn't it great to not have to do math either? <laughs> And it's nice that you can, these are great uh, shapes to, you can chain piece uh, and really get going Definitely. into an assembly line mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to. So I'm just going to press that out and then we'll take our other one and half square triangle and sew it right on there. Again, make sure I get all the way up to the needle. There we go. So this die is definitely great for beginners or for all skill levels. It's a must-have for your die library. Especially with it being notched, it's going to give you the accuracy. Yeah. And the 12-inch size uh, is, is just a great size mm -hmm. to uh, mix and match with other dies that are in your library. Right. One thing I do want to point out is that this is a perfect goose ready to go. A lot of times when people are first making them, they think the point here should go all the way to the edge. Mm -hmm. And reality is that's my quarter inch seam for when I sew this strip together with my next shape or goose so that I get that perfect point at the top so we mm -hmm. don't have to bite out of our goose. And that's a great tip to keep in mind Mine. when, mm -hmm. yeah, if, it's, if you're just starting to sew these for the first mm -hmm. time. Cool. So what fascinates me about the table runner here is this center block mm -hmm. where we did some different layouts with this shape. So you want to talk about what we have here? Yes. So this is so these are pieces that are cut with the flying geese die, and uh, so these are the the quarter square triangles, and then these are just the half square triangles that make the the windmill block and. So it's just wonderful that it's not just flying geese. There's so many other combinations that you can do with this die. And that's really the fun of quilting, mm -hmm. is when you start playing and the arrangement of how things go together, all the different designs and blocks you can make. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. Did we talk about the pattern book that no. comes with the? We should definitely talk about that. OK, mm -hmm. so this is the pattern book that comes with the Go Big fabric cutter. And in the back of the book, 
there are uh, even more ideas about what you can do if you mix and match with just a few other Go dyes that you can get all these wonderful blocks. And most of these have all flying geese units in them. That's mm -hmm. right. So tell me what you're thinking. Would, would the Ricky Tim's the one seen? And, and because he ends up, you know, with the pockets, you don't, you just leave the pockets as is? So. Yeah, they're called three dimensional flying geese, and you can quilt right over it whatever you want to do as far as that goes. So yeah, if you use that method, you do leave them as is. Oh. It just reminds me when we were doing the trees and houses, I had such a hard time with the sky. <laughs> now I know the solution. Now I know how to do it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, but one of the nice things about the old fashioned method is that it, you don't have that bias edge. You're sewing through a solid piece of fabric. And so it's not going to torque as much. Once you've cut it, then you have that diagonal edge to deal with. And uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it can distort. So either way, I mean, as I say, there are at least a dozen different ways to do these things. If you want to read some of those videos and uh, explore, see what feels comfortable to you, what works for your fabric. Um, I noticed, for example, on the AccuQuilt thing is that, oh, and it saves you fabric. But did you notice when she took it out of the machine, she, she threw away those pieces of fabric that were around it. So she threw away the same amount of fabric that you would have thrown. It doesn't really save you fabric. It does save you a lot of time. So uh, it's a trade-off, but it's a couple of hundred dollars for the machine. I have one, Fran has one. Uh, you know, if you need some stuff cut, we can talk about it. Do you know the name Eleanor Burns? Eleanor Burns has done a lot of quilting books and her shtick is quilt in a day. She has different <laughs> things that you can make in a day. It, I, I warn you, it, she doesn't mean the whole quilt from beginning to end. She does mean the top and just doing a top in, in a day is pretty amazing. But she has a lot of economical and quick um, ideas for how to help you. And with her uh, method for making um, flying geese, you make four at a time and they come out kind of rough and then you have to cut them to size. So that's why she advocates using her ruler to work with that. Um, whenever I have made flying geese, I always wind up having to trim them to size if I really want a particular size to go in my quilt. I think in the old days, if, if they were a little irregular, it was not a major deal because you could de deal with that as you were sewing them together by hand. Um, and it doesn't really matter what size they are as long as they're consistent in size, you know, depending on what you're trying to do. But um, anyway, just make peace with the fact that you'll probably have to trim your geese uh, because if, if you get that sewing line just a little bit off, it gets amplified when you fold it over and iron it. It's either too short or too long or something like that. So I've always had to trim my geese and mm -hmm. it's just the way the game is played. Mm -hmm. Well, accurate cutting, accurate sewing, and none of this is perfect. <laughs> sort, of, <laughs> sort of the way it is. But so the die cutting is, it has that advantage. It is more accurate cutting. And so the only dependency then is on your faithful quarter inch seam. Um, but that is a dependency, so. Could you use that um, foot that has that little edge on it? Yeah. So you could put yeah. it to, to make yeah, exactly. more sure about that. Exactly, so if you use your quilting foot with a little fence on it, then yeah, it, you're more likely to come out with a good quarter inch seam. But it, you also have to remember that you have to match those edges, the two pieces put the edges exactly together and then mm. keep them together and against the fence. And yes, you'll get a good yeah. quarter inch. The, the, I'll pin it to hold them together and then sew it and then press it, yes. Yeah. I keep my ironing board up all the time. It's right at the other end of my sewing machine room and I have to walk over to it. So that gets me up out of my chair and go exercise. So it's actually a good thing. 
Janet, have you done much with uh, flying geese? Um, I think I kind of picked up a, a quilt at a yard sale that had flying geese and I wasn't really being that conscious of it, but I do like it. Yeah. So whatever it was, it was. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I'm really interested in using like the rulers, like I didn't know Eleanor Burns had one. I've seen one on uh, a couple um, Bonnie Hunter's one website. She kind of, I think she kind of cloned a ruler from somebody else. And um, she starts with strips and then just cuts the, um, Thing, the, the wings or the sky back and forth. So I kind of like to go that way. Okay. Are you? Have you used the? I don't know the Pony Hunter one. I was just going to look for it on the web and see if I can find it. To show you how I use the companion angle ruler and the easy angle ruler together. Well, to make I'm not really sure why it's so soft. But, flying geese um, units. I can I help you. He's going to show it. I'm going to turn on my heat. Ruler. Well, and I was never happy with the other methods to make flying geese. Either I was cutting way big, so I was having to slurp. Oh, that's right. Sorry, I was having to cut <coughs> from various sizes that I don't keep in my scrap user system for <coughs> at a time. As was acting up. My scraps what? cut in um, specific measurements. I use inch and a half strips two inch strips, two and a half inch strips, and three and a half inch strips in most of my scrap quilting, I needed a method that used the strips that I already have on hand. And I can do that with the companion Whoa. angle ruler and the easy angle ruler. Let's start with the companion angle ruler because it's gonna be the big triangle at the bottom of our unit here. These are quarter so square she's triangles, using so a lot of scraps and strips that she already has on the hand. bottom edge of the triangle on the long side, the hypotenuse. So what we're going to do here is take some two inch strips. These are two inch strips because these will work with the unit that we've got in our mystery quilt that's running. This is for the easy street. So she's using a These two -inch geese strip units she has on need hand. to measure two inch by three and a half inches before they are sewn in the quilt. So that's why we are starting with our two inch high strips. I've got four strips here layered together. They're well, all let me just, um, if she's using a two inch strip, she's gonna cut her rectangles from the two inch strip. Then what's the finished height of her goose gonna be? One and a half. One and a half <laughs> times two is three plus a half inch is three and a half. So what she needs for the rectangle is her two inch strips by three and a half inches wide. That, that's what she's needing. The right side up. Oh, way so too small. I did not follow that. Quickly <laughs> by laying several strips together. Four layers is the most I want to cut through. I'm gonna use the two inch line on the ruler and put that two inch line at the bottom of my strip set. I've got the blunt end of okay. the so companion she's using angle her ruler at the top of the strip set. The two inch, and I'm gonna reach two inch and I'm gonna just trim this first cut off. Cutting that off. If I were using a quilt um, that used half square triangles in this size, I would also trim these off with the easy angle ruler because I can save those for another project. This is very simple. And because and she's working with 45 next. degree I'm angles. Cut, move my strip set, and then we're going to pivot the ruler. I so want she's you to going think to turn of a the ruler machine, upside like down. The washing machine. And use that, that agitated, just like 45 this, degree this angle in a different now I'm way. Pivot the ruler, and now the two inch line is going to go at the top of the strip set. Oh. Make another cut. Just like that. Move your strip set, bring the ruler back around. Now put the two inch line at the bottom of the strip set and cut. Sometimes after four or five cuts, I find that I might be getting a little bit off kilter at which case 
I will start a clean cut and trim off anything that seems to be out of whack. Right, so if she's matching the 45 piece, degree angle, but she's also triangle, double checking right at the baseline to make sure the baseline like is straight. These came directly from my strap, scrap drawers. Here's all of my purple scraps in two inches just waiting to be sewn into a quilt. So now that we've got our geese cut, here's some other two inch strips that I have put together. I've got four strips here, and I've These layered These are going to be her sky strips. In matched and she has four strips that right she's sides put together. together. So I have two strips here right sides together, two strips here right sides together. We want them right sides together because- I love I'm this woman's brain. So, and <laughs> she's putting right sides so together because she's going to need to have tip of of two that are exact opposite there. of each other. So Not two that are the very same, but two that are opposite. This is the easy angle rule. So by putting the right, si putting the right sides together, strip, you have I'm one that's two inch straight inch up and one that's upside down. If you look here at the bottom of the ruler, this is a very well-worn ruler. I use this a lot. The two inch line comes up and it goes over. Where it goes over, that's your missing dog ear. And that's why we can get by with a two inch cut instead of a two and three eighths inch cut. We've just removed the dog ear first, which actually saves us fabric in, a long, in the long run. So that's, that's a good thing too. I'm just gonna give myself a clean cut on the end of this strip set by putting any okay, line so at the top of the strip set. She's gonna start by cleaning up the end of the trimming off to remove any salvage, any uneven ends. And then she uses her I'm ruler. Bring this back around. Now I might have some left-handers in this group watching this video. So um, if you are a left-hander, if you're left-handed, you do the opposite. The right-handers would start. The lefties would just turn the ruler upside down and cut from the right end of the strip. So that's the only difference there. Left-handers would start from this end. Right-handers will start from this end. Here's my two inch line right at the edge of the strip set and I'm gonna cut. Oops. Just like this. Uh -huh. That's cut That's one. Good. If you can read easy angle right side up to your nose, you know you're in the right position. I For like the second cut, I want you to imagine that there are two hinges right here on the long hypotenuse of the easy angle ruler. You're not going to remove the ruler from the table. Do not even lift it up. All you're going to do so is let it roll on that those hinges. A hinge on that hypotenuse bring the two the inch ruler. line down to the top of your strip set. Flip it up the black right triangle down. will hang off the bottom end, and you're going to cut just like oh, this. Very clever. Okay. Now, if I were making regular half square triangles, instead of having two white strips right sides oh. together, I would have my dark strip and my light strip right sides together so that I could cut already matched pairs ready to go through the machine. But we are cutting these as wing triangles that are going to go right here on either side of our geese. Let's do that one more time. I'm going to roll back to one and move my ruler over. What you want to avoid is counting from one to yeah, two. I see what to you mean, Janet. This We're is only a nice count one. To two in this cutting process. Yeah. So I started to tell you, Eleanor Burns uh, is quite a, lo a long time quilter and very good quilt teacher. And as she ages, she's had problems with her hands and had almost given up quilting because she couldn't cut things anymore. So she's teamed up with AccuQuilt to help people who are aging to continue to be able to cut out a whole quilt and still, you know, be, not have pain in their hands. So, uh, so I have the kind that you crank and uh, uh, Fran has the electric one, which is more expensive, but you don't have to crank it. How is, is Fran finished working mm -hmm. on her quilt? I haven't spoken to her today about it. I talked to her yesterday, but we didn't talk about that quilt. So I'm I'm sure she's still working on it. Here's Is she gonna quilt. send it out to be quilted or give it a try by I herself? She's not quite done with the top yet, uh -huh. but, and I'm not sure she's gonna send it out. Probably so, because it's a king size quilt is a lot to deal with on a home machine. Yeah. 
Uh, I hope everybody has a great week and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye-bye.